The reason I did this project because of Texas Snowvid 21. We had unprecedented cold weather in single digits over eight days. My ting reported 80% of power outages over eight days. Had a lot of damage outside, very icy trees breaking down. I didn't manage to get to the store and the shelves were empty. I did have power cords running everywhere. I was able to power some things. Um, so I was fairly organized in that respect, but it was painful. I had enough power to make my neighbors breakfast and uh, some hot coffee for them. That was good. I created a draft plan to move breakers to get an interlock switch and to add a Romex cable. Here's my breaker boxes. These three or four are for solar. They cut off when the city power cuts off. So I'm going to throw the breaker to the city power and what we want to build is an inlet box so that I can stick my generator in here and power my house. Except that the wire to the box is going to go up into the attic across into the back so I don't have to run the power generator next to the mine and the neighbor's master bedrooms. Check and double check that you have the master breaker off. So the plan here is take these two 20s and move them here to a mini 20 split. Take these two 20s and move them here to a mini 20 split. Move this guy down. Move this guy down. And move these down and put in a 30 amp breaker here. Now 30 amp breaker will go to the cord and inlet box power the house but we'll put an interlock switch on here. I got a nice one from Eaton that either this one is on or the new 30 amp on. It can't both be on at the same time. That's the safety mechanism. I will note that when you're doing this you can see my GATON. This is a Cutler hammer box. The breakers are specific to your manufacturer. They're not inter interchangeable. So you need to make sure you know which which box you have and which breakers when you go uh, look up the parts. The next thing I'll note is my generators are 30 amp and that's not enough to power the whole house but it's enough to power every individual thing plus some others except for the large air conditioner, two air conditioners. That takes 33 amps. I didn't want to put a 50 amp in. It's a heavy wire and costs a lot more and I'm not trying to be off grid and live. I'm just trying to survive when the power's out. And so I'm going to put 30 amp breakers here and then a back a 30 amp plug inlet box and I was going to use 10-3 wire but I did a calculator online I'll show you where that is and that drops um, I don't know what it was you know six volts or whatever six percent I can't remember I decided to go with 8-3 wire on a 30 amp so we need to validate it's going to fit all the connections but that reduces the drop significantly it does cost a little more but it's okay I'm missing a screw here. I don't know what happened to that. I'm going to take the front panel off in a minute. This I'm going to take the solar power off. That shuts all this off over here. This is uh, three breakers for individual panels. So I've got the solar side off. In a minute, I'll shut the main power off. By the way, I have expert help on this. And this is going to be done to code. Do you notice how this front panel is put in here? There's supposed to be two screws here to hold it in. And then it just wedges behind these bolts coming in on the side. So I take these bolts up. This thing just slides up here. And this whole thing should come out forward. Okay, we're going to test the hotline. Which would black one go on this one? Doesn't matter. Black here, and then over here is ground we see 120 volts so that line is live since it's 240 we have two lines coming in right 120 if we go below it below this breaker should be zero right yes zero okay and try both sides that's a good point zero okay so this is off down here okay 
we want to do is take these two off and move them down. The first thing we're going to do is pop this out so the circuit's not complete, even though we tested that it was all off. Now, there's no power going to this. So then we just come in here and undo that screw and we're good to go. And then we'll do it again with this one up here. We'll pop it out, make sure we get our wires in the right order. No circuit. Again, even though we tested. Just want to be safe. And then unscrew. And we're good to go. Okay, we get the new double. I'm gonna push it in the hole, tighten it up. It just so happens that these two are both of my electric furnaces upstairs, so put in. I want to make sure these are tight and that the insulation wire is down below the indentation so there's no chance in this thing sparking or hitting each other. They're in there, give them another tighten. Okay, let's push this one back in down here. Inside here, there's a little plastic tab on that vertical. This little, this thing, little notch clamps onto that, like a little hinge. Get it on there, push it in. Okay, let's get these organized right. Push them back. Now we're going to take this double out and move it down to here. Okay. We're not changing anything on this one, I'm just moving it. Okay. Okay, we're going to test the new double breakers. Power is back on. Put a probe here, a probe on the ground. We measure 122. Probe, probe, 120. Let's shut that off. Let it go off independently. Point one five. Huh. That's supposed to be zero. Stray voltage. Stray voltage, okay. One twenty. One twenty. I shut them both off. Let's see what happens. Okay, there's zero. Shut both of those off. Should be zero. Oh, it's got a little still leak. Straight. It's still residual, that's okay. Okay. All right. We're good to go on those. Flip off the main. Flip off the main. After they get there. Okay. Up there, huh? so we're going to come out the bottom on this one. And we got one inch conduit for 8.3 Romex. Here. We couldn't find a lock, so we used a male connector. Came down here with a 90 degree. We cut an inch off of this 90 degree, and then we're coming up behind all of that. And then it's going to go up into here, and we're going to level it off and drill a one and eighth inch hole. Yeah. It's down here, all the way down into that crawl space underneath there. It was really difficult to get in. Comes across. I have to nail it down still with some little tacks. Goes all the way over there. Comes over that ridge over there. All the way into that back corner. It's 120 feet of Romex. Got the 83 wire. Our soffits are below the roof. You want more? So you can't really get Remember, down to the soffit. Remember, you need two feet once you're in the panel. I pull it all the way through. We'll cut it off. Yeah, pull some more. Okay, we got the 8-3 wire run. 
It's a little difficult because these soffits are, what'd you say, about six to inches to a foot below the ceiling inside there, so you can't crawl all the way to the edge. So we managed to drill that hole, got someone to go in the crawl space, and fish that out. It wasn't too bad. And we ran the uh, spool up in the attic, went across up in here, diagonal all the way over to the box. And coming down that hole was pretty straightforward. So we had to crawl spaces up inside this little edge here. Okay, we've got the ground. It's going to come up. It's okay if the ground is, is just bare metal. Yes. It's going to come up and go into here. Little open slot. And then we've got the white, the common. It's got an open slot here. So we have the ground and the commons in the same bar, right? And then we'll go in with the black and red into our 30 amp. And does it matter which one goes where? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. We're going to use square yeah, bits on well. these so that they don't strip these little screw heads out. They have both a standard head and a square head. And we want these pretty tight, too. What are you setting that fork at? Seven right now. Seven. That's good. Here's four. Good. That's good. Okay. Get the new 30 amp breaker. And this one just clamps around the back of the plastic. Okay, we have achieved a milestone other than fine tuning and painting and caulking and putting little clamps in the whole bars to the wall. We are nice. good to go for a test. You shift the wire up. When you want to take that knockout out, put a screwdriver in here right on that lip and schwack the end of it. And it'll poke through like that one. Right, and on this side, put it in here, schwack it out. Then you come back in and pry it off. Nice one, they're real knockouts. A lot of these other boxes just have marks, they're not knockouts. You have to get a tool to cut the hole. I had to cut some of the spacer to make sure this pipe was vertical. Just a PVC cutter and just cut a little bit on each side. I got a new threaded coupler I'm going to put in here and raise it. And I have a lock nut I'm going to tighten it with. I'm also going to caulk it. I thought I ordered a GE panel, but it's a Leviton, and that's good. I put the ground wire in, make sure that's nice and tight. And you can see they're all labeled X, white, and yellow. For you to be able to uh, put the red, white, and black in. Wah, wah. So I'll show you a chart. As long as you get the white one, and the green one's already there. And just put the red and black on opposite sides. We're all grounded. Good to go. And there it is. And when that plug goes in here, that angle, this will shut all the way and I can lock it too. The plug will still stay in there. It's a little bigger, but I like it. It's metal. And I still have to put, I'm going to put a little clamp onto the wall up there and caulk that hole. And viola. I finally finished. I didn't paint the conduit. I mean, let it just sit for a while. I don't really like the letters, but I don't expect it to come out that great. But in any case, I got the little 
one screw holder on here. I had to go um, up a level. I think it's one and a quarter to fit over one inch PVC that's made for one and a quarter metal conduit. I got all the caulk in here. Put it in there and I'll clear out after a while. I put it in yesterday. I put a bunch of foam in here. I didn't have to do this, but I just don't want water going back behind there. Try this plug out. I may get a little piece of foam or a cap to put on here, but this closes and I can lock it. There we go. What a project. I'm glad I did it. You can do it too. Yeah, I finally found the right interlock switch for my breaker box. Third try. I laid I measured it all out and traced it and that's gonna screw in like that. And I'll show you how to do that once I put it together. As far as tracing it. Okay, I screwed the holes from the outside, put the screws in through the back. Then you have these little nuts that have a screw uh, screwdriver head on them. Tighten them down so this thing can slide. Okay, this fits really snugly against this. We don't want that on. When it's on, this goes up. Now I can power the generator and determine which of these I want on. Turn it off. And everything is off, including the sub panel. And if the generator is off, this slides down. And I can power the whole house. But not both of them. They're mutually exclusive. This goes off. This comes up. Off. And that can't, can't get past there. Okie dokie. What? Now i got to update my charts. to too many down here. But I'm going to do one more test with the power generator. So after we got all the mechanics installed, we ran into a problem. We started the power generator and it kept tripping. And after scratching our heads for a couple hours and talking to experts on the phone, we came to the realization that the generator has a ground system in it and the house has a ground system in it in terms of the GFCI and you can't have both. Oh, so that was a little frustrating. So I went back on the internet and looked, and there it was for the Honda EB5000 generator. Ten years ago, there was a tech note that said, here are the instructions to take a little three-inch piece of wire out of the generator to use when you want to power your house. You put the wire back in if you're on a job and you're running tools and you want a ground system. So that was... Uh, uh, a little frustrating. We could have finished the whole job in under two hours, but it took a couple more of us bumbling around, checking, unwiring, double checking, getting a voltmeter, checking the generator. So I wish I would have had looked that uh, up earlier. I would never have thought about it. And none of us did, except somebody got a good idea about what the problem was. So you may need to do that on your generator also if it has a built-in GFCI system is uh, figure out how to take that little jumper wire out. It's working. <laughs>